Good afternoon, students. Today, we continue with um, lecture part of medical informatics and biostatistic course. Uh, in fact, we have fifth lecture scheduled for today, but such as I have not, not yet completed uh, material from fourth lecture regarding uh, various methods of statistical analysis, so we still remain on question related to statistical analysis for a while. Uh, let me share my... my screen. And now, uh, previous time I have considered question related to <coughs> performing statistical calculation by using spreadsheet application and the major most important part was of time was spent regarding hypothesis testing. So uh, today, uh, today I will continue with uh, other statistical analysis method, uh, especially correlational regressional uh, analysis in Excel and then optimal uh, optimal um, task uh, solving approach. <clears throat> In general, correlation is one of a uh, few methods related to made uh, decision about uh, possibility of permanent uh, kind of uh, permanent uh, dependencies between uh, variables, especially correlation use when in case when we talk about two variables. Actually, the following chart is uh, extend those chart I have already demonstrated previous uh, on previous lecture, which was related to uh, statistical hypothesis testing. And as you can see here, also present few of those methods related to identification some difference or presence of effect uh, in our data. Right now we will concentrate in this area which is could explain possibility of positive or negative relationship between variables or correlation. And here is in fact again uh, we have at least three methods to determine uh, to identify correlation uh, in different way which is in fact uh, as usually depend to uh, number of variables uh, or type of variables and also type of distribution. Almost every time we talk about usage of uh, Pearson or Spearman correlation and in case if we have only nominal data type for <clears throat> uh, dependent variables, so specific uh, uh, additional um, kappa uh, methods could be used. As you can see, this chart summarizes all approaches uh, for performing hypothesis testing as well as correlation and even up to regressional analysis, because all of these methods is in, in general represent various stages of statistical data analysis. <coughs> <coughs> 
if you move uh, more closely to correlation itself, it's statistical techniques that uh, could show whether and how strongly a pair of uh, variables are allotted. And here is most important that it's a pair of variables. So methods could be used only in case if we have two variables. If you want to analyze more variables, so we can identify all possible pairs and perform analysis multiply times for each pair. Practically results represented in form of coefficient of correlation, which range from minus to plus one. And when we talk about that it's closely to plus or minus one, that small strong correlation uh, is present, so variables more uh, tightly related one to another. In addition to coefficient of correlation, it's a square value uh, called a uh, coefficient of determination also uh, used very often and it's show percentage variation in which is explained by uh, all the x variables together so <coughs> coefficient of correlation could provide assessment about how these two variables are related one to other and coefficient of determination could sign which part of um, variability independent variable could be explained to work variability in independent variable. So, <clears throat> as I already mentioned, there is two main approaches to uh, calculate uh, coefficient of correlation depending to uh, type, uh, type of data, depending to if we have data align which is fit normal distribution or abnormal distribution. So in first case, we talk about Pearson product moment uh, correlation. Uh, and a second uh, situation when our data does not fit normal distribution or contain uh, some uh, nominal variables. Uh, in this case, Spearman's run correlation will be correct to be in use. Link below give for you more more details in case, and especially in case of uh, application of correlation uh, for solving medical problems. So technically, we can calculate both um, Pearson and uh, Spearman's rank uh, correlation by using the following formulas. So again, as I said previous time, if we have data and formula, every, every time we can obtain results, but we have to be careful with uh, distribution type as a hand, our cal calculation will be absolutely useless. So at right side shown uh, information from uh, statistical guidebook, of which denote uh, how we can interpret, how we can understand value of coefficient of correlation. So how strong correlation is depending to particular value. And again, we can uh, talk about strong both positive as well as negative correlation. So it's sometimes students made mistakes. They decide that if they have negative correlation where coefficient value that it's, there is no correlation. I'm sorry, not. Uh, we have negligible correlation only which is closely to zero. So values closely to zero. Uh, told about that it's almost uh, impossible that these variables could be correlated together. <coughs> In case if you want to apply spreadsheet application like Excel, OpenCalc or Google Spread, so we have few um, already implemented features inside, for example, Corel or Pearson function two different function name, but they do exactly the same things or calculate Pearson product moment correlation. Attention, those function does not check if your data fits into normal distribution. So only you as a researcher responsible to identify, uh, to check, to perform this uh, check in and conclude if it's possible to use Pearson product moment correlation. Technically very easy, we have to provide two ranges for two variables and instantly got uh, coefficient of correlation values. Uh, also available correlation uh, to under data analysis tool pack and 
in uh, this case, we can provide even more than two variables altogether. Our final results will be represented in form of uh, matrix which will uh, provide all possible all possible um, coefficient correlation value for all possible pairs of variables. In this particular example, as you can see, we have in case for three variables ABC, we have strong positive correlation uh, between A and uh, C variables and almost negligible correlation for A and B or B and C pairs. Okay, uh, after correlation of analysis, typically we have to move into further investigation or uh, when a researcher identifies presence of some uh, positive negative uh, correlation between variables. Very common next question is to use this knowledge uh, to build mathematical model which will simulate our process and try to predict uh, future or sometimes even past value uh, necessary based on that mathematical model. And uh, uh, regressional analysis, um, which could be done by using cover fitting process. So actually this slide have to be understand in reverse order. Uh, it's a statistical method which could be applied for this case. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, as I said, uh, major aim, it's uh, uh, major outcome of cover fitting, its ability to pro proceed with regressional analysis or creating uh, or um, creating prediction for past or future value. One of possible techniques of cover fitting its process of trying to find cow that best represents sample data or sign relationship between independent dependent variables. Uh, so here is we talk about kind of graphical analysis and most of all spreadsheets software support this. If we talk about regressional analysis itself, it's also included in other methods, not only carbon fitting, for example, analysis of variance uh, could be used to us uh, regressional analysis methods and so on. Uh, but right now I will just point about uh, cover fitting as uh, one of the most easiest approach to identify that mathematical model. Again, as I said, major aim is a retrieve mathematical model which will depict relationship between variables. And if you uh, get back into your school material, so you have to remember that we have actually five common mathematical model, which could be represented by the by specific formulas. For example, a linear logarithmic. We have linear equation, logarithmic equation. So in every time case, if you talk about usage of cover fitting or any other methods of regressional analysis. Um, the goal will be is to identify Z parameters or Z coefficients of equation, which will give for us a mathematical model of our current process. So actually what is uh, spreadsheet application uh, cover fittings to give for us, it's re re return us back with this coefficient value. Uh, in other common models, it's power and exponential. So here is we have again, typically we have pair of coefficient both cases. And finally, uh, polynomial model, which include multiply coefficient. Um, practically most of spreadsheet applications support to generate polynomial models up to six order. It's in fact very complex equation. <clears throat> but also with such uh, high power polynomial model, we have high risk of overfitting of our model, which will be which will extremely fine explain our current achievements, current results. But we will have serious risk um, uh, to get uh, to pass in, uh, to pass uh, to fall into wrong uh, decision with prediction. 
Practically, if we talk about how we can use spreadsheet application, so it will be thread line features which is available under uh, Excel spreadsheet, open calc spreadsheets, as well as uh, Google spread. Um, and with some limitation Office 365 Excel. I think as a uh, spreadsheet application support as well, but I'm talking just about that application I have experience with. So practically all this case you have to uh, construct uh, proper chat and add, uh, which will visualize your data properly. Most of cases we are talking about XY scatter plot chat. Uh, for sure, line chat type in spreadsheet supported, uh, and we can use trend lines here as well. Uh, just we have to ensure that uh, chat choice fit with our data uh, with our data types. Do we have like uh, continuous discrete data types or nominal, ordinal, categorical data types, and so on? Uh, so once you add, uh, once you create chat, you can add thread line to existing data series, and also you will be able uh, immediately to visualize um, the mathematical model, create, uh, provide, uh, perform graph, sorry, provide, perform uh, graphical prediction, and visualize again a squared value coefficient of determination. Uh, which is uh, in this case used to provide assessment of quality of our mathematical model. So here is example from modern Excel uh, how we can add multiply thread lines under number one. Uh, um, at this moment, polynom with third order being added. Uh, and the second point we have uh, immediately tried to provide forecasting for VART for two periods and we have visualized our mathematical model with coefficient determination which explain how far our data predicted my model will be from our actual data. So again, as usually, so closely to one, so better results will be. And in case if we want to add multiply, uh, model set a time to decide which one is better for our case. So it's possible in this way we can add multiply. And here is we can uh, relatively easily determine that line our model best in this specific case for this specific data because we have uh, best value of a squared value of a square coefficient of intermination. Okay, I think before I will move into transportation problem. Uh, it's uh, time to provide a short live example, short live example, and I will switch into my Excel. So right now, uh, both this uh, topic I want to cover. So first of all, correlation. So technically, when you have uh, your variables uh, entered into spreadsheet, it's very easy both create chat as well as create, uh, calculate coefficient of correlation. In my case, I have three variables even, uh, so for sure I can create chat for all three. Um, simplest case, I just want to come for you for, to compare when I will try to add the line chat what I will have. And so here is I have uh, all three variables and I can have some suspicious that's may be available correlation between X and, um, X and Y, and not sure about that. Uh, but if I would try to add such correlation with scatter plot, so it have to be incorrect because in this case we have X as independent variable and Y and Z as dependent. Uh, in this case, uh, this particular is not fully correct. It's, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not fully wrong, but it's not fully correct because in this case, it shows for us um, a relationship between X and Y as well as X and Z. And if you want, for example, determine relationship between Y and Z, you will need to build one more scatter plot. 
And in case uh, if you have, if you want to identify relationship only between X and Y, and it would be even better uh, to use separate scatter plot, which in this case match uh, same results from my second chart. So here is we have every time we have to keep in mind what kind of data type do we have here. And in this example, be careful and not include samples number because it's only uh, a categorical variable which represent our scores, uh, information about scores like number, sequence or just name or so. Our actual data is uh, our three variables and every time we have if you're given two, you are looking for correlation between this pair X and Y, or Y and Z, or X and Z, but not between sample number and X, which is absolutely does not make any sense. So be careful every time with such kind of uh, chat. And even uh, every time would be better if you create separate chat for each pair of variables pair of variables so here is will be uh, your much you will receive much more cleaner result um, technically calculate correlation very easy I just start with function name and provide my ranges so I can conclude that I have uh, relatively uh, high positive correlation, uh, strong posi uh, high positive correlation be between X and Y variable. And if I want, I, if I would try to use correlation of analysis to pack uh, correlation. So this time I have involved my labels. First row, my data samples are in columns and my output range have to be somewhere below. So in this case, as you can see, we have a high positive correlation between X and Y. Uh, also, we have good positive correlation, uh, negative correlation uh, between X and Z and moderate correlation between Y and Z, negative as well. So means negative, then one variable decrease uh, decry the value, uh, another decline. Uh, and again in a reflective way. Uh, as you can see, it's technically very easy to um, uh, calculate correlation uh, values with spreadsheet. Attention in this demonstration, I omit and does not provide assessment of distribution type. I just uh, skip it. It's have to be done because, so I assume that I have data which is fit normal distribution, but it's have to be proven, it must be proven before I will be able to actually perform statistical calculation. So we have a few methods, for example, you can calculate uh, skewness and the kurtosis coefficient for each for each variable I assign and then compare with critical and decide about is it you have um, uh, normal or abnormal distribution. Similar way, uh, you can use uh, three sigma method or even Kumurova Smirnova or other methods. Okay, that's about correlation. Now about regressional analysis. I move to another task, which is very common uh, business task, uh, but same model will, could be used for providing assessment for spreading epidemic or so, and actually your tasks uh, for topic 10 already update and will have relationship to prognosis about uh, COVID pandemic, but here I will consider more conventional business task when we have to predict future sales volume. In this case, in this case, I will uh, also uh, this time much better to use uh, scatter plot rather than linear chart. And in seconds, I will, uh, I think I will provide example about why uh, you can use scatter uh, plot with dots or you can use with segments, it's even possible. And just you have to use right click, add red line or use plus button, few approaches. 
then you can use multiply methods. For example, I want a graphical prediction instantly, and I have visualized my model uh, and chart. And again, similar way, I have to add the, I'm sorry, not thread line, but uh, add another thread line, for example, polynomial third order, which is already mentioned uh, in my chart. So here is I have. So just take a look. That thinks I thought about uh, possible cause of overfitting. Take a look. That's um, we have polynomial third order, uh, which have much better uh, square value than, for example, linear model, but how different graphical prediction is. It's very large difference. And here is uh, researcher have to think about which method uh, must be used in this particular case, especially consider that last four periods we have uh, something process look like uh, come to some stabilization and more closely to linear. So maybe even uh, more correct will be will be to consider just this part, this period, and create another prediction, not consider full range, but create prediction based on relatively short data. Uh, because prognosis will be absolutely different in this case. Just um, let me show this. So here is if I will use only this data. I can add thread line as well, and it will be uh, even with linear. I will have another model and I will have another uh, coefficient of determination for this model. So it's actually hard question to determine what we will have in fact, uh, which kind of model do we have and which kind of model will be really uh, good for simulation in our case. And finally, what I want to show it's possible uh, problem which could be caused by choice of uh, chat type. So here is similar uh, task, which is related to prediction of future sales. And here is we have everything is going fine when we have interval of observation is equal, like one month. But what if not? What we will have irregular interval of observation. And immediately we have, mm, we will have uh, different results between linear chart and left and uh, scatter plot and right at right side. And our model, even if we talk about linear model, will have different value of quality and different coefficients of so prediction will be different. And here is a very important problem. So if you have, uh, if your interval observation is constant, OK, almost no difference, but no matter which kind of chat will you use, liner or scatter plot. But if you have uh, irregular interval observation, uh, only scatter plot will provide for you correct result. Take a look about data points at scatter plot and compare to line chat. And even similar things we have in simple case if I have uh, not date by sequence like in my previous example, where actually I like miss one month or so. After six, I have immediately eight. Compare again line chart and scatter plot. So that it's only also sign why usage of scatter plot more often become correct, rather, especially if you have uh, independent variable continuous or discrete. I remember time every time continues, and if we turn it into discrete observe into specific observation point, we would say a discrete variable, and here is exactly discrete variables in this case. Okay, uh, now back to uh, 
fourth question uh, in topic four regarding transportation, transshipment, a segment problem. So it's not exactly statistical uh, task, uh, but we also uh, it's actually optimization part of optimization analysis. Uh, it's also method of decision making as well as uh, hypothesis testing, relational analysis, regressional analysis. Just here is we have another scientific method called linear programming. Uh, in this case, programming means not development uh, computer program, but uh, only solving of linear equation. So, um, uh, main aim is uh, process mathematical features that enable development very efficient Unix solution methods. A uh, very large number of applications available for this uh, mathematical techniques and the various areas uh, almost everywhere when we need create kind of schedules when can, when we want to optimize usage of uh, resources physical resources human resources uh, create some uh, uh, as I said schedules uh, or schemes or so so all every time network optimization and linear programming become useful in all these cases. Uh, if we will consider exact transportation model, transportation problem is deal with distribution of goods from uh, source point when we produce or store some resource into uh, some delivery points when it has to be consumed. But also exactly the same uh, mathematical method applicable uh, with uh, resource allocation when we want to uh, like uh, create maximum amount of uh, some our uh, uh, pro uh, products from given uh, source material or also same um, symmetrical method uh, useful for creating optimal schedule and assign uh, uh, peoples to projects uh, and so on. So even university scheduling, creating schedule for education, fall into general linear programming methods and could be solved with linear programming methods. And it's part of transportation problem or sometimes call it it's a super transportation or transshipment problem. So again, completely different things, delivery of goods, production of it, and creating schedules. From a mathematical viewpoint, it's exactly the same things. Uh, and here is that things I already mentioned, that's about assignment model. So uh, I will consider uh, in brief mathematical approach to solving this problem. Uh, and we have to prepare some uh, mathematical definition like we have uh, only for default transportation model when our goal is to deploy some, delivery some uh, items, uh, some items of units of goods from source point to destination, no matter what is this. Uh, it could be some furniture, it could be pharmacy, uh, some medicines, it could be like even uh, transportation of patient and so on. Um, so we have M sources and uh, each one item source have uh, supply capacity of S of I and then we have N destination in which have uh, provide some demand for goods <clears throat> destination G, it's there from G. So objective, it's minimize total shipping cost of supplements, destination with required demands from a label supply and source. For sure, it could be available in other goals. So we can minimize time in if uh, in mission critical time or in case of uh, resource allocation, we are talking about like or uh, 
produce maximum amount of some uh, some goods or in scheduling we actually talk about uh, like close all position uh, so assign a teacher for each classes or so so again it will be changes only from applicational side uh, of this task so only from practical practical sides being changed but mathematically actually nothing nothing uh, right now we will uh, next few minutes i will consider only balanced transportation problem which is or actually ideal uh, case when we have equivalence between amount uh, total amount of supply and total uh, request from uh, consumption point from uh, consumer uh, most of mathematical model works uh, better for this ideal case uh, and in reality yes for sure in most time we have this unequivalence so in this case every time we have to provide some mathematical adjustment uh, to get into um, uh, this equivalence and then okay consider real consequence uh, analyze real consequence and uh, provide real time adjustments so uh, here is given some assumption about uh, a classical transportation model characteristics like so product transported from number of source, number and station, minimum possible cost source, uh, able to supply a fixed number of units of products, and international fixed demand for products. And um, uh, so linear programming model has constraints for supply at each source and demand at each destination or constraints in this con case means limitation. We provide specific limitation uh, for about maximum capabilities for Arceu and de uh, deploy uh, goods. Uh, also contains constraints inequalities in balance and model where supply does not equal on demand so in this case we have additional additional limitation have to be provided again actually no matter which units we, uh, we deliver uh, we will operate by uh, abstract mathematical points uh, abstract mathematical definition of uh, goods Actually, it's not far from reality for what all this um, delivery company do uh, when you give them your own parcel, they just wait it and measure and decide which how to classify your stuff into how many units it will be equivalent by weight or by size. So it's actually working even more closely than you could think about it. To you. So here is like a very simple example when we want to deliver some uh, materials from factories to warehouse or from warehouses to pharmacy shops. Also, if you talk about, for example, pharmacy, uh, medicines or anything that we need to de deploy. And what also, what information have to be known? It's uh, like um, some daily very cost per unit that abstract unit I sign. Then actually major goal is major objective. It will be that formula here is again very simplified when we want to minimize shipping cost, but by identify this uh, unknown, um, so we, multi we, multi we uh, multiply shipping cost by our transportation plan, which is already unknown. Uh, unknown and we have to identify such combination of that uh, the text it will be our solution it will be number of units shipped from specific uh, source point to specific destination so our goal is find such x of ing which will give for us minimum possible value for above function and if we talk about list of constraints, it must be uh, related to available number of units and also number of units which is asked from 
and consumers, uh, clients. And then uh, finally, we, uh, everything that we have at our factories or warehouses have to be deployed to, to, to clients. And we have, uh, so if you talk about usage of spreadsheet application, it will be something like this one. When we will have transportation plan here is in the center, then we will have calculate flow in, flow out. Um, our cost matrix has to be provided and single one function, uh, which is actually some products, uh, which is represent for us objective function, and it's a result of multiplication transportation cost by transportation uh, plan. So here is actually already provide solution, kind of solution. So at this point, we will have specific value of total cost, but it's actually still unknown. Is that optimal solution or not? It's very easy to put some value, but we don't know is it a really optimal solution. And special spreadsheet uh, tool covered solver uh, implement um, linear programming, especially simplex method, most common and classical methods for solving uh, system of linear equation and provide for us possible best results de depending what we want to minimize or maximize our uh, task. And so here is we have a kind of uh, solution that's with uh, given enough probability, it could be covered, considered as optimal. So practically it's solving of such tasks required sometimes hours of paper working, but could be done in second with spreadsheet application. So, um, but what we will have to do if in reality, when almost every time we have an equivalence between resources and requests from our uh, uh, clients. So, uh, so we have like some extra resources or we have lack of resources or something else. In this specific case, we have uh, supply exceed demand. So we can, uh, like we have more resources. Uh, very uh, actually comfortable situation. So we just have to add the dummy demand point, which will be utilize that extra resource. For sure, any transportation cost will be zero because nothing will be transported. It will remain at source point for next iteration, delivery iteration. Uh, but it's required to be done in order to will be possible to apply that mathematical mm, approach, simplex linear programming method. Uh, in other case, if transportation uh, we have less resources than total demand. So problem became uh, much more difficult. So we doesn't have real physical cap capacity to fulfill each client in this case, um, but action still required. We still to do something, even if we, for example, doesn't have enough teacher to cover our classes classes still will be provided somehow. So means teacher have to have class with two, group, two groups at a time. It's actually a scheduling solution. And here is we have similar situation uh, in uh, mathematical uh, approach. We introduce dummy resource, even if it doesn't have this resource physically, we can mathematically, mathematically allow for us to tell, imagine we have it, and then we will be able to solve task. For sure, again, we will have kind of problems, and we will have to uh, adjust final results. For example, if you talk, no matter if you talk about business delivery or if you talk about scheduling. Okay, now about uh, usage spreadsheet for solving uh, transport. One more time, extension about uh, solving and delivering, um, in this case, task which is much more similar to that you will have in uh, 11, uh, topic 11, as I remember. It's uh, solving problem with delivery of 
some pharmacy, uh, some medicines from warehouses to uh, pharmacy shops to drug stores. And here is you will have to create optimal plan for this case. So two steps of data preparation shown in this slide, a bull you have to create at the beginning empty transportation plan. Every time we fill it with zero, it's market under four. We have given availability of some resources under number one. We have given demand from our clients and that's second row. Here is we have. Then we are given um, cost matrix. It must be known for you. And uh, in fact, we have to we have to uh, calculate our real resource and real request. So uh, real demand, like as you can see in this particular case, our demand, our request greatest than available capacity. It's exactly that last point I spoken about it. So we have, before we will be able to perform, to use built-in Excel analytical capabilities, we have to resolve this issue uh, with feasibility problem. So in this case, have to be introduced dummy warehouse. Again, I sign, it doesn't have this physical capacity, but in order to, let's say, correct the symmetrical solution, we can, we must imagine that we have it. We add this dummy resource, we provide it with capability, with availability, which is difference between real resource, real request. In this case, it will be 20. And we have to add to this, um, uh, yeah, uh, zero transportation cost because so we can't deliver that things which is not available in reality. So here is given that uh, third step here. And then our, uh, so we can proceed with preparation of data like objective function, as uh, I said above, it's multiplication tra ma trans uh, cost matrix by uh, uh, transportation plan matrix, which is zero then flow out and flow in, which have to be equal to uh, maximum uh, availability and uh, demand. So we have to, we, we must get everything we have at the house and we must fulfill demands of each uh, client. So then, the only your task will be it's to uh, technical task. So theoretical task, it's past feasibility condition. It's compare resource to request and decide what kind of uh, imbalance do you have, extra resources or extra demand, and decide about which kind of uh, dummy object have to be used, dummy warehouse or dummy pharmacy. In If you will have opposite case, more uh, resources and demand, it must not row, but column must be introduced uh, in this case, but it's much more simpler case and it's uh, easy to be in use. And final step, it's just uh, create settings for uh, solver add-on in Excel, where objective, uh, objective cell refer to objective function, and we have changing variable cell, it's our transportation plan, and cons uh, constraints or limitation, it's integrity of solution. Uh, that's, we have to only, let's say, we not split our units in parts, we just operate uh, by integer number of units. Uh, and then that's we have our limitation, like flow out must be equal availability and uh, flow in must be equal demand uh, and so on. So then with method like solar XP, we can instantly, let's say, use this selected with red uh, square solution and possible optimal cost. Uh, and what I want to admit that such as uh, dummy warehouse is D, so this 20 units will be not delivered, can't be delivered, so uh, this specific client will be not fit his um, demands. Anyway, and what is more important, task could be improved uh, 
uh, depending to our um, uh, specific needs. Anyway, it's example how optimal solution task could be solved with spreadsheet. So in this part, I already solved. I already depicted topic about correlation of analysis, regression of analysis, and even optimal management uh, problem solving. And now, and now, I think it's time to move further into uh, actual topic five, with, uh, which is related to information systems. Uh, okay, right now, uh, just a second to switch to another presentation, please.